where um, one of the critical story moments happened in Silent Hill 1. If you wanted the good ending, you had to do something kind of convoluted here. Yes, Sybil, the policewoman. Oh, this is Alessa.
Yeah, I was not ready for that gun. Because those do a lot of damage. Um, that's a lot of damage. All right, shoot a Cinderella and dwarf mask the snow white. Flashlight off. Radio off. Use my silencer. Thank you. 
is still running around somewhere. Right? Uh, Beyond Control 4, what's the Moss Code like noise? Um, yeah, I guess it's the spooky stuff. Spooky. I actually got copyright claimed on YouTube. They recognize part of the like industrial noise. It's part of the silence. So it must have some kind of melody, I guess. So these are split heads, so their like front face is like split open and they're demonic. So this is kind of an easter egg from the first game, which I finished a little bit earlier uh, on the PlayStation 3. And so in the original you played as Harry Mason, um, this very uh, low polygon guy on the PlayStation 1. Um, but the theme park here was one of the areas that you had to get through. Um, and then in the first game these little memo pads were like your save points. Um, and this is kind of an easter egg I guess. Um, with Harry Mason's uh, notes from like near the end of the first game plot wise uh, so in the first game uh, Harry Mason uh, was going through the town of Silent Hill getting through spooky stuff searching for his missing daughter Cheryl um, some plot stuff happens we learn of this girl Alessa who was terribly burned in this fire and put into a coma um, and stuck in the hospital. 
Um, and apparently Cheryl was uh, discovered by Harry Mason on the side of the road near the town of Silent Hill not long after Alessa was uh, put into the coma by that fire. Um, and Cheryl and Alessa were like always linked somehow from that day. So when, uh, when Cheryl was like seven years old, um, they're drawn back to the town of Silent Hill. Uh, but Harry Mason loses Cheryl and then has to go find her. Um, and so this is kind of towards the end of the plot of the first game. Um, there's this cult lady, Dahlia. So she says, he says, Dahlia's the one who said it, said that girl was a demon, that she took my daughter for a sacrifice. But it's not totally believable. I mean, appearances can be deceiving. When I saw that photo in the hospital basement of Alyssa, the girl who got burned, uh, I thought, that girl looks like Cheryl. Is that why I feel this way? Something's not normal anyways. Nothing good will come of this. But I just can't think of her, my daughter, as a demon. Is it my imagination, or do I actually feel sorry for her, for Alessa? Why do I feel like she's looking for someone to help? Cheryl's what's important to me. Everything else can wait until I've gotten her back. There's a date and a signature at the end. It's dated some 17 years earlier, um, which is exactly how old um, uh, Heather, the person we're playing as, is in this game. Hmm. Signed by Harry. Is that bad? So Heather, this protagonist, the person we're playing as, um, appeared under mysterious circumstances 17 years ago. And um, Harry Mason, uh, Heather's dad, who um, we played as in the first game, left her this notebook kind of describing everything that happened in the first game. Um, and he basically explained that that cult tried to give birth to this god um, but thankfully he was able to thwart that plan and prevent the god from bringing about the end of the world. Um, but then um, basically he was able to save um, his daughter Cheryl, though not completely. Because basically Cheryl had half of Alyssa's soul and Alyssa had the other half. And so she was reborn. Um, and that's where Heather came from, basically. At the end of the first game, a baby appeared, and um, Harry Mason took it away before, uh, like, the place fell apart. And that's where Heather came from, for this game. So. Nice little plot easter egg. Would be very easy to miss if you're just trying to run through this. first game was really, really good. That's really the only PlayStation 1 game that I've ever beat, the original Silent Hill. Um, but it's a superbly crafted game. Extremely well designed uh, with the Konami team, Team Silent Hill. Alright, let's see if I can do this boss battle properly.
this is like a psychic projection of Alessa. And it looks very similar to the on our own character model.
Okay, what does she have? She has a handgun again. Let me check my guide, just make sure I'm not supposed to do anything special. Oh, she's holding a submachine gun now. Not again. I got a close range with her though, pretty quick. Yeah, she's holding a submachine gun now. Distance, where do you go? No, 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 It would be better for myself to die. After all, it's nothing to be afraid of. That child, that demon, when I think of the endless pain it will bring when it's birthed, I decided that instead of the suffering and cruelty I endured in that sick room, so this is Alessa, um, who we just defeated. So that child, that demon, when I think of the endless pain it will bring when it is birthed, I decided that instead of the suffering and cruelty I endured in that sick room, 
that I would like to bestow a more gentle and peaceful death on myself. Why do I resist? I never thought of myself as such a fool. Alessa. I guess it's kind of strange for me to call you that, since I am you and you are me. But you know what? You and I don't think alike, after all. And it's not that I don't remember that sick room either. And being in a coma, being burned. Interesting. She's defeated her inner demon! But there's still more plot to be unveiled. Oh no. 